This is the December issue of Sports Illustrated, and uh, my first guest has been named by Sports Illustrated as the Sportsman of the Year. I can't think of anyone who deserves it more. And on January 21st, the Big Brothers of America will name him as Man of the Year. His uh, longevity in basketball is, is becoming a legend, and I'm going to quote the coach of the Boston Celtics, Casey Jones, who said, quote, Kareem's been finished for the past five years, but somebody forgot to tell him. Would you welcome Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Good to see you again. Nice to be back. And congratulations on something that uh, is not long overdue. You could, you could have probably won this the last 15 years at any given time in your <laughs> career. Uh, what do you, what did, you, did you hear that quote about uh, Casey Jones of the Celtics when he said you've been finished for five years but somebody forgot to tell you? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I, I've had uh, people uh, wondering when I was going to leave. Um, <clears throat> Bob Lanier, who's retired, you right. know, he, I did a movie with Bruce Lee a long time ago. He said, you know, I like that movie because she got killed. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you're going to get out, huh? <laughs> Look, you, you've got records. I think you've made, you've made more baskets than anybody. You've blocked more shots, uh, er, everything in your career. And yet people keep saying year after year, you're getting better. Uh, there, were a, there was a period in your career three or four years ago where you were entertaining the idea of Hanging it up, won't yeah. you? I, I guess um, it's uh, it, it's something you don't understand that your profession means that much to you until you have to find a new one, and it's like geez, I never what thought I'm... of that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think this job? Would you do this? I could go. And that. <laughs> Tell you what, we got a little piece of film. Let's show this first because this is kind of a composite, uh, and we got this sent to us by the National Basketball Association. Just show some of the reasons why you received this award, and you'll see uh, Kareem here in action. I don't know what game this, well, you played hundreds of games. And this must be against the uh, Celtics in the playoffs last okay, year. Okay, a little, uh, little, little hooker. Little sky hook there. A little hooker. Another little, Ooh. oh, come on. Man. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, little snuffer. No, oh, that's, that's for you. You make it look. You almost make those shots look like, look so simple. Uh, you do them so effortlessly. Uh, that it looks like, well, you know, anybody says, oh, that should be easy, you know. It's not without effort, but some players uh, had that ability to make it look easy. Yeah. I remember uh, Roberto Clemente used to make playing right field look really easy. Yeah. Yeah, like anybody could go out there and yeah, say, hey, that doesn't yeah. look easy. You can get plenty of time to get to the ball. Plenty or... of time, and the ball's curving away from him. But he, he did it with such a grace yeah. that it just it just looked easy. I, I've been fortunate like that, but it definitely ain't easy. You are, I believe <laughs> We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back and talk a while. Stay where you are. You won't believe what we were talking about during the break. Not basketball. We are talking about jazz and music, oh, yes. right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know you're a big, big jazz music fan. Let's go back a little bit. We're talking about that point in your career where you, where you didn't have the enthusiasm five or six years ago, right, for the game. Right. Any particular reason at that time? Uh, I, I probably burn out, and uh, I'd never really gotten the, the opportunity, opportunity to enjoy it. Yeah. It always seemed like there was something about it that I didn't like. And, uh, you know, I always kind of dwelled on the negative. And uh, that was my own fault, just... Uh, what turned it around for you? Uh, just the need to be understood, probably. Um, I had a great career, but uh, I wasn't appreciated because it, it just... It was... Uh, there was always something that, that just didn't sit right. And I, I started really to emphasize, uh, count my blessings, right. as opposed to my problems. And yeah. I found out I had a lot more blessings than problems and from that point on it, it turned around and uh, my image changed because yeah. of yeah uh, one time with the press pressure. you had you were really a uh, pretty much of a loner yeah. and, and the press come would kind of get on you saying you were uncooperative and wouldn't talk and you really kind of stayed away from them did, did you feel that the press was uh, uh, on I, I, you too much and I was my own worst enemy yeah uh, you know if you make an effort to uh, 
to be understood, there are people that can understand you, but uh, because of a few bad uh, incidents, I kind of like wrote them all off and decided that they were all bad guys. Yeah. And that's, that, that makes a problem. Like a blanket indictment generally of the press, yeah. huh? And when you understand that there are good guys and bad guys in any profession, and uh, if you make the, the effort to understand them and uh, find out who they are, uh, you can usually work with them. And once that started happening, uh, everything else turned around. Yeah. Now, you, you're your 17th year now as a, yep. as a pro. Yeah. No, nobody's done that before. You're, what, 30? <laughs> it's obvious. It's obviously obvious that your skills certainly have not eroded your playing as well as ever. Do you, is there anything today when you play that you don't feel you did as well as you did, say, 10 years ago? Uh, not really. I think uh, the wisdom that I've gotten about the game more than compensates for any physical uh, deficiencies that I might have. But I've also kept uh, the physical thing at a pretty high level by uh, training 12 months a year. And uh, you, you just have to be dedicated to this as a profession and uh, approach it like it, it was uh, something you want to do all your life. Yeah. And uh, at that point, you can make your own choices as to when to leave instead of being told, uh, psst. You know. <laughs> do, you, uh, do, you, do you ever think about that day, Kareem? Do you dread that day when somebody might call you and say, uh, Kareem, can we, uh, we talk to you a second? <laughs> uh, and, and how you'd handle it and how uh, it would change. As you say, you've, this has been your career for so long, yeah. college basketball, now the pros. And you're 38. I mean, that's incredible to play this game when you're 38. Um, is that they bother you that that idea that somebody's going to come and say to you, "It's time to"? Uh... I'm I'm very fortunate in, in that I haven't had to worry about that because I've stayed on top of it. Right. And uh, by staying on top of it, I've kept uh, most of the choices for myself. I didn't force anybody to to come and tell me that uh, I I wouldn't work out with it. Yeah. There was one uh, one point there where uh, my contract had run out with the Lakers and. Nobody wanted me. It was like being a man without a country. And uh, just trying to think about what I would do for the rest of my life, it really uh, forced me to, to look at it and uh, really appreciate what I was doing and uh, right. what it's done for my life. Have you given any thought to that? Let's say in two or three years, maybe five years, you decide to hang it up. What you'd like to do? Um, I signed a deal uh, with the Universal MCA to do a, a jazz label. Oh, did you? Yeah. And that. Uh, that's something I'm going to be pursuing uh, as time goes on. I, I, already I've got people sending me tapes and telling me, listen, there's this kid up here in Omaha that you've got to go <laughs> So that's... Uh, a that's lot of people, I think you found out, I, I think we talked when you were on the show, that you, your house, unfortunately, which is a loss that uh, really can devastate people, you lost your house and most of your belongings about, what, three, four years ago? Yes, yeah, three years ago. Three years ago, yeah. and just, you were on the road, yeah. and the thing burned down. And uh, a lot of your personal memorabilia, and of course, irre irreplaceable yeah. records my, and stuff like that. My record collection and my books. And, and you found out people uh, weren't so bad, they, all of a sudden they started sending you things. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. People think that, gee, you're a superstar and you have all these things going for you. You, you never need any help. Yeah. And then, you know, at that point, I, I really needed just somebody to come and say, hey, we're thinking about you. And uh, people came out of the woodwork. I remember we, we, we were playing a game in St. Louis, and... Uh, I'm on my way to the bus after the game, and two, two old, you know, elderly women came up, and they had these great jazz albums, about three or four of them. They said, here, take this. Really? You know, and they just put them in my hand and waved goodbye. And it was, it was really nice to see that, that people cared, because uh, I didn't know they were out there. Right. You know, they'd been there. I didn't know that they were out there and that they cared. And that was, uh, that was a really good thing to find out. As bad as the fire was, right. uh, there were a lot of good things. It restores that, your faith, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you understand what, what really counts. Yeah. Anyway, congratulations on Sports from the Year and the Big Brothers tribute coming up. It's, uh, it's wonderful having you on the show. Uh, it's, you're a fascinating man. It's a pleasure to watch your work. And, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. Nice to have you as a friend. Maybe, maybe I can do, do this as long as you've been doing your job. Huh? <laughs> you know, you'll probably be at it that long. <laughs> <laughs> Kareem. 